disconnect the wireless.
and this part of the program will come to an end. But not before I've announced that I'll be group photograph. Would like to have photograph the Christ Chancellor. If the weather permits us, we we'll go it outside. If not, we are going to have the photograph right inside the hall. Once again, you are welcome to this one new workshop. My name is Nan Aporico. I am the University Public Relations Officer. As we await the arrival of Christ Chancellor, The dean of the postgraduate school is just working in majestically. I'm happy to welcome him. Before the formal introduction of our guests, I know some things are here. I have seen that the of the Faculty of Agriculture, Professor Mrs. Dicta Otisi, let me to welcome her. The Dean of Art is also here. Our students from far and near, we want to thank the Father for our vice chancellor is with us. Thank you. Thank you for the dean of your faculty. We thank you for every staff of your faculty. Blessed be your name, Lord Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, unto you we lift up this session. That even as we continue, Lord, we ask for your presence. We ask for your guidance. We ask, O oh Lord, that you take the lead. Now let the purpose of this garden be fulfilled to your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as men are ought to be here, they are not here, Father, wherever they are. Lord, we ask for joining mercies in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We are not in of the enemy, dear, we take authority, power, dominion over every wondrous spirit. Every contrite spirit, Lord, will subdue them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. As we continue, Lord, Father, we pray, Lord, that your presence will continue with us and end with us. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Sister. join me as I formally introduce to you and welcome to this event the People's Vice Chancellor, Professor Andy Ogochuku Ebuyenga.
May it interest you to know that Professor Ibuyenga is a professor of parasitology and entomology and a very gender sensitive person. Join me once again to welcome him to this event. <laughs> Sitting very close to him, what in our palace will be regarded as the best half, is the wife of the vice chancellor, Professor Mrs. Ibuyenga. We also have by Mr. Ibo Egeneji, Secretary, PG School. <laughs> the University Librarian, Mrs. Josephine, Dr. Mrs. Josephine. Dr. Mrs. Josephine Odoako is our newest university librarian. Please welcome her. <laughs> Permit me to also recognize and welcome to this at the high table, especially the dean of the postgraduate school, Professor Temea Corona. Dean of Education, Professor Mrs. F. Mugodji. All other deans, and I can see the Dean of Agriculture, Professor Mrs. Ogisi. The Dean of Arts, Professor Nelson Edewo. Dean of Science, Professor Austin Atoluji. The Dean of Pharmacy, Dr. Clement Anien. The Dean of Management Science, Professor Akon Rebukoro. The Dean of Physical and I, basic medical science, Professor Kinsley is a Wangwa. <laughs> dean of the social sciences, Professor Sam Mogege. <laughs> the immediate past university librarian is also here, Professor Steve Waifu. We recognize your presence and also welcome you to this event. We recognize all heads of departments and heads of administrative units and we welcome you. We welcome the resource persons. We appreciate the presence of the local organization and public relations officer. At this point, Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Andy Okochuku Ebuyenga, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, the Registrar, the Bursa, the University Liberia, the Dean of Postgraduate School, Deans of other faculties, professors here present, lecturers from the Faculty of Education, postgraduate students, ladies and gentlemen. This is a welcome address presented by Professor Mrs. F. N. Ugoji at the workshop on PowerPoint slides design and presentation organized for postgraduate students and lecturers of the Faculty of Education. 
on this day unprecedented brevity and precision. Throughout this workshop, the facilitators will delve into the core components of a well-designed presentation that not only educates, but captivates your audience. They will explore the nuances of visual storytelling, the judicious use of multimedia elements, and the seamless integration of your narrative. Each slide will become a canvas and your words the brush strokes that paint a vivid and memorable picture in the mind of your audience. Our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and tools to stand out as you deliver your research with impact and to effectively communicate your ideas. Whether you are presenting in a lecture hall, a conference room, or even virtually, the principles that will be discussed here will remain relevant and applicable. As we embark on this engagement together, I encourage you to approach the workshop with an open mind, a readiness to experiment, and a desire to hone your skills. Our seasoned facilitators will guide you through the intricacies of design, layout, color theory, and content organization. Additionally, interactive activities will allow you to put theory into practice, ensuring that you live here, not just with theoretical knowledge, but also. So without further ado, let us delve into the realm of presentation design and uncover the secrets that will transform your PowerPoint slides into compelling narratives. Thank you for joining us, and let's make this workshop a truly enlightening and enriching experience. Thank you. this workshop. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. All other protocols of the are already established. I'm happy when the MC said uh, I'm going to give remarks, not address. And actually, I prepared for remarks. Um, if you see our, how sometimes we feel well, during the external examinations, where our students they come in there, I always tell them that they behave as if they are in mass communication. Mass communication, you just write and read. They copy their thesis and dissertation on slides and call it PowerPoint. There was a, a case I nearly walked out and walked out the student from the hall. But later on, I, did, I, I thought of it. We have three layers of presentation, one department, the other faculty, and now external examination. If the department could not handle it, and the faculty did not, it's not the fault of the student. And I can't punish the student for the fault of my own colleagues. And I kept shouting and telling them this. So when I heard that education wanted to organize this workshop, I was pleasantly surprised. It's a novel action. And I think all other things should emulate education. Not just for the <laughs> not just for PowerPoint presentation alone. One expects other faculties to take other aspects that has to do with students in the postgraduate program and organize workshops for them. 
They should not wait for the contrary school itself to do that. The partners should do that. Yes, the students are few. Faculty should as well. It's, it's supposed to be a teamwork. And one expects, like I said already, the deans in other departments, other faculties should take cue. And I'm so happy too that all the deans invited, they are present here. So they are seeing what is happening today. September 1st is a very important date in postgraduate school. One, that's the date. Okay. The plagiarism at the faculty will be affected as of September 1st. Any documents on the table of the dean of the school without plagiarism report from the faculties, because for now we have the work for the PG school itself, will, will be turned back. You must attach it, including your publication. Then now we have a new a review guidelines for writing dissertation and thesis. The effective date of that as well is September 1st. So that's why I said September 1st is a very important date in the history of the Contraria School. All the necessary documents that are available, that are needed, if they are not there, you can't go for external examination. And this workshop that has been handled, I think will be a pra very practical workshop, not theory. I was informed when I asked that you were advised to come with your laptops. I'm seeing the laptops here. Those who don't have, I think they will have to pay off. I don't know how the workshop is being organized, but I think for you to work, it's not notice board, not, uh, notice board arrangement. You have to work hands on with your laptops. It's a very easy thing, so don't be scared, don't be worried. The only thing that's more sure, you don't even know how a laptop looks like. But it's a gradual process from analog to digital. On this note, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I wish my students a very fruitful workshop for today. Thank you very much. Postgraduate school, please another round of applause for him. At this point, I'd like you to join me. I've got you to give me a speech. Good morning, all. Good morning. Please sit down. The principal officers of the university. The deans all gathered here in solidarity with the Dean of Education, which underscores the importance of this exercise. Uh, distinguished lecturers in the Faculty of Education, professors, and postgraduate students, I welcome you all. I consider this initiative very timely and uh, very important. Uh, the first remark I want to make is that postgraduate studies is at the heart of competitiveness in the university system because the universities compete and are rated externally, globally, on the basis of research and publications. And it is at the postgraduate school that we begin to concretize research and publications. No matter how brilliant a lecturer is, it is from his own postgraduate student's research that he builds the base for the excellence that he will display. If we don't have very grounded postgraduate students, they will not be able to compete. And like I always say, the strength of the postgraduate school is directly related to the strength of the university in terms of research and competitiveness. I always use the word competitiveness because there is a race among the universities. How many universities do we have in Nigeria currently? Sometimes we find it difficult to keep records. 
By my last record, as many as 264 in Nigeria alone. We are all in the same market, unquote, competing for students, competing for space, competing for recognition, competing for ranking. People have to look at the quality of the university before they make a choice where to go to. So to be competitive, you must be digital, because that is where the world is going. The dean of graduate school just asked now that everybody be have laptops, and that you're here with those laptops. The reason is that even in secondary schools, there's no good secondary school where the requirement that you bring to, to the school as a student will not include the laptop these days. What's more a, of a university and a postgraduate institute? Because what medium are you going to use? It is now the internet that will provide you with the medium to reach others. You all know the state of security. You know the state of our roads. You know how busy academics have become. It's becoming increasingly difficult to say that you can bring the top academics when you are defending to the university. Some of them will just have to examine you virtually. Is that not so? Many. That is going to be the way to go. In future, not many external examinations will be face to face. I predict that over 75% will be virtual. So when you have mastered PowerPoint, you also, also have master how to present your PowerPoint virtually, whether through Zoom, whether through Microsoft Teams, whether through Google Classroom, various other means. And even within the PowerPoint, you need, still need to have knowledge of other multimedia. Because you may have a link in your PowerPoint presentation that will link you to maybe a voice note or a, or a, a video or an illustration of a map or reference to another journal or a paper or another source of information. So the global audience, how you reach your global audience is also very important, where you have mastered the lab. So I urge the faculty to go beyond to go beyond just the technique, but the medium for communicating these techniques. My vision is that every faculty must have a digital environment that it has created for this purpose. A digital environment that it has created for this purpose. If you are going to organize certain postgraduate programs, it should be such that the power of internet in the environment is strong enough to allow other people to follow through Zoom, to allow maybe an examiner that is not physically there to be part of it, so that even your PowerPoint presentation, you can do it through Zoom. You can be speaking to it while you are communicating with somebody outside, perhaps not within the country. That is the way to go, and you have to master these techniques. And for me, this is the beginning. We must have installed in chosen facilities within the faculty, the smart board, so that as you're teaching, you can link up with the internet. These are, these are things that are tenable that many other universities are already doing. Because if we don't do so, we run the risk of being left behind. This is a very important beginning, and for that reason, I urge all participants to give it the attention and the seriousness it deserves. The first part of this event will come to an end, but before that happens, I'd like to request Reverend Father Adakre, one of the postgraduate students, to come and give the vote of thanks on behalf of the students. Divine Chancellor, Professor Andy Eguyenga, all protocol duly observed. On behalf of the students of the postgraduate school for organizing this workshop, this workshop, we pray that all we do today 
we pay meaning to our academics. Once again, thank you. Thank you very much, Reverend Father. I'd like to announce that at the close of this first part of the ceremony, we are going to have group photographs with the Vice Chancellor. First of all, the principal officers and those on the high table, the deans, the directors, we are going to have that picture outside. Thereafter, the postgraduate students, the participants, will also have before to close this opening ceremony for us in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you very much for your graciousness and your mercy. We thank you for every participant in this place. Thank you because they have come to Delta State University, the university of choice, to do their postgraduate program. Father, we ask that as they get more competence, may their degrees work for them in the name of Jesus. May they fly with a degree. May the dreams they had while coming to pursue postgraduate become a reality. Amen. Father, we pray for all of us on the other side, the teachers, the instructors, the administrators, and the leadership of the university, the vice chancellor and his wife. We ask, oh God, that you give us the wisdom to keep our part of the bargain in the name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you for the dealing of the faculty, Professor Mrs. Ugoji for putting this vision in her mind and for all those running along with her. Father, we ask that as they impact, may their lives also have positive impact in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we pray all this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please. Please. This one's the national anthem. They're not ready. If he. Okay. The photograph will be taken outside the hall here. So, all the people on the high table, no. please no. join the vice chancellor outside for the photograph. The rest of you, please remain where you are. We'll call you when it is time for you to find them.
five conditions. We said you make sure you have your laptop ready. If you don't have one laptop, pair with somebody that will in this workshop and benefit. Ladies and gentlemen, standing on the existing protocol, just give me five minutes because I have sent someone to go and uh, purchase my laptop so that when he comes, I can use my laptop to moderate the laptop and the workshop. Thank you. We are here for a purpose. While waiting for the first uh, resource person, he has been introduced to us. We want us to contain the movement, please, to avoid distraction. If you have not registered, go and register now. Because without this receipt, you are not going to do your presentation. Go and do your registration now. It's not too late. You can still call your friends who are not yet around. Let them come now and register and be part of the workshop. And so, though he has been produced, may I call on Dr. Lawrence Arumuru, who is the first resource person there. Dr. Lawrence, please. You should also know that at the end of the exercise, you will be awarded a certificate to testify that you attended this wonderful academic workshop. And they will form me too to ask you to be prepared this is an academic award, and each time, even we lecturers, when we attend workshop, there is examination. That is going to be tests after the workshop. You may be giving some tests, yes, and mark immediately so that you know how you perform. And so, Dr. Lawrence is ready. His topic is summary of points and number of slides by session. Summary of points and number of slides by session. He's going to present from where we have a laptop. You can also see whatever is presenting from the, the board. Lawrence, please. Thank you, sir. While he's presenting, please, no movement in and out. You can move through the back door. We don't need uh, distraction. No one should come through the two side door. If you want to go out, try to use the back door, please. Those going out, use the back door so that there's no distraction. Dr. Lawrence. OK, thank you, sir. Uh, please permit me to proceed with the already established protocol. The Vice Chancellor, the Dean of PG School, and Dean of uh, Faculty of Education, they have all said it all. PowerPoint slide design and presentation is what is in full. And I want to add that uh, it and uh, we are very we are doing here today. It's in line with the vision and goal of the university on key areas where our students have not really caught in the technique in presenting their slide in PowerPoint and also uh, the presentation. So today, I want to talk on uh, Sorry, I have introduced already. My name is Lawrence Arumuru from the Department of Labor and Social Science. And I'm talking on summary of points and number of slides per section. 
Now we have, how do I begin? Now my presentation is drawing closer and I've been requested to put it in a PowerPoint slide. So how do I begin? It's one of the questions that come to their mind. How do I design the PowerPoint slide? What font size and style will be suitable for the PowerPoint slides? And uh, should I include images, uh, tables, and figures? What should I include or exclude from my work? You have a work of more than uh, 100 pages. Only your background to the study is more than 10 pages. So you will be tempted or be at a state of confusion. What do I include? What do I exclude? All your, uh, all what you have in the background, it seems suitable for to be So, so uh, these are some of the questions that we, uh, this workshop we try to address today. So there are other questions that are not included in the slide now, but in the course of this workshop, we are going to address so many of them, if not, if not all of them. Now, let's look at the first one template of uh, this PowerPoint slide, the template. Now, what you are seeing on the board that is being uh, displayed is what we refer to as the template. So how should it appear? Uh, I want to give us some of those uh, tips on uh, how uh, you go about the design of the template. The first one, slide should not be two-worded, go straight to the point. So by the time you load each slide with so many words, like what you have on the screen, you can see it even from behind. So that should be uh, one of the tips that should guide you when you are preparing your slide. Use large and readable font size. So the font size should not be too small as I proceed, I'm going to give you the recommended 32 minimum, should be 32 minimum, while the maximum is 48, and it should be bold so that the audience will be able to see it without straining their eyes. Also, the font size for the body of the test should be 24, so minimum should be 24, and 16 in case you have a footnote in your slide. And uh, also, important statement should be bold, whether it is the uh, body, data in italics, underlined, in large size, and you can use different uh, colors. Like you can see on the slide, that uh, 34 minimum, 48 maximum uh, presented in bold format. So that will help you to uh, emphasize on important uh, statements and also use figures, tables, and images to address your point if possible. This is uh, a very good uh, uh, tip if you are preparing your slides. You can use figures, can use tables, can use pictures or images to address your points. Now, let's uh, continue with the template. Use the same background for all slides. So, not uh, slide one, different background, maybe the color is different from slide two. No, it will be distracting. So, use the same background for all slides. Avoid distracting transitions, animation, or sound. So, the essence is for you to send a message to the audience. So, if they are distracted by the transition, or the animation or sound will be carried away by those things. Instead of getting the message you are trying to pass across to them, their attention will be on the transition, the animation, or the sound. So make sure you avoid uh, this. Also, font uh, style, there are some recommended uh, font style, as you see them there, Times New Roman, Arial, Tahoma, like the one I'm presenting now. I use Tahoma 28 for the font size. So you can see it's very conspicuous 
you can see it from uh, behind. Then another key uh, point you need to note when you are thinking of how to design the template, present one subject or issue by slide. So do not be tempted uh, under introduction, as you are through with introduction, statement of the problem is under introduction. No, each slide should uh, be pre should represent a particular issue or subject. So do not embed another subheading under uh, the one you have yeah, just finished addressing. So the audience will not be able to get the message. Now, let's uh, we are through with the uh, templates. Let's look at uh, tips on designing your slide. Now, I've given you uh, some guide, uh, tips that you should be mindful of when you are designing the PowerPoint uh, template. Now, you want to design your PowerPoint now. So there are also tips that will guide you on designing the PowerPoint. Number one, do not sacrifice readability or message. Uh, do not sacrifice readability or the message for style. Now, the essence for the PowerPoint slide presentation is one, the audience should be able to read what is being displayed and for them to get the message. So if your emphasis is more on the style, so you see some slide, they will use different uh, transition, different animation, different colors that are so attractive and uh, thereby distracting the audience. So they are atten the, the attention of the presenter is more on the style than the message. So the essence is on the message. What do you want them to the style? Also, the presentation is not about the PowerPoint slides, but you. So this is a major issue. You see, you find our students reading from the slide instead of talking to the slide. So you should be able to own the work. So if your mindset at the point of designing the slide is about the slide, not the presenter, not the message, then you have made a very big mistake. So the emphasis should be on you, the presenter. Instead of you designing a slide, and you will be tempted to read all through. No, so the essence of the presentation is about the presenter. Provide only the right amount of information. When I started, I said, if you have a work of over 100 pages, and only the background to the study is above, uh, 10 pages. So you will be tempted to include every detail, every citation, every factor that is on verified statement because you don't find them interesting. You want to include everything, thereby overlooking to a fixed, rigid presentation. So you have too many slides that you want to address in your presentation. So you On the slide, you are struggling to read or to attend to piece by piece. That is six words in that point, then six uh, points per slide. This is okay, but if your audience is not too large and you know that if you go beyond that, you can go beyond that. Now, let's go to the major issue that uh, I want to address to the sections to include a PowerPoint slide for dissertation and thesis. You have different chapters in your thesis or dissertation. What are the sections that you are supposed to include in the PowerPoint slide presentation? The first one is the title page. The title page is very, very important. And if you uh, observe that with my presentation, you will see that I started with the title page. So the next one is the introduction, the review of written literature, methodology, summary conclusion and recommendations, and of course, the appreciation uh, stage. So let's go over the, it will start with the topic, your title of your dissertation, 
or your thesis, it should be very, very conspicuous, bold enough for the audience to see it. And uh, of course, in the title page, you should include details of the presenter. So you, the person that is making the presentation, your details should be in the title page. So without, without any formal introduction, your audience will see your details on the screen. So that should be included in the uh, title page. Also, of course, where the presenter is studying, your institution, faculty, or department should also be included in the title page. Then you can include your, the name of your supervisor or supervisors. Although this one I made it optional, so it's left for the presenter. You can include the name of your supervisor or supervisors, depending on the level of at which you are studying. So dates, the date you are making that presentation should also be in the title page. So all this should be in one slide. So the next one is the introduction. So under the introduction, you have the background to the study. Uh, I put it at uh, two. the background to the study so that you will not be tempted to include all citation detail or factor in every word, every citation in the background, you want to include them because they look interesting to you. So you must abide by the rule that says you should go straight to the point and do not sacrifice readability for uh, all message uh, for style. So, the other should be able to read what you are presenting, and also the message should be clear enough to the audience. So, in the program, only include help you to prove a valid uh, point that what you are investigating does exist, and there is need for you to carry out the study. So that is what we guide you in your background to the study. Only include significant or important points or statements that will help you to prove that what you are studying actually exists and there is need for you to carry out the study. The statement of the problem should just be one slide. So under the statement of the problem, state the reality of what you are uh, investigating and uh, go straight to the impact of the, the problem in that environment and try to make a tentative statement what will be responsible for that problem and what once you have done that you have established the statement of the problem so you don't need to evaluate it with too many statements that you, uh, at which you are making the presentation. Then list some of them in the slide. You must not include all of them. But that does not mean that you don't have the knowledge of other research questions. You know them, but you cannot put all of them in the slide. So once you have made an introductory statement that total number of um, the research questions, uh, we guide or guide the study, the list some of them, you are good to go. Likewise, the uh, hypothesis, he said, to begin to speak to the slide, you must not begin to put inside the PowerPoint slide what are they are going to benefit or what they are going to benefit. So once you are able to list those that will benefit, you begin to speak to the slide, how each of this group of persons will benefit from this uh, study. The next one is scope and limitation. This part is usually broken down into two, the context scope and the geographical scope. So once you are able to address these two key areas, you are good to go. So you don't really need to list all of them. The, of course, the context scope is in line with your research uh, questions. So and hypothesis depends on the area in which literature has been reviewed. So, once you are able to list some of them under the context group, you go to the uh, delimitation. What area is this study covering? So 
once you are able to establish this, you are done with the scope and the limitation. So let's go to the, the next one, review of related literature. Now, this part of the research, you might have more than 50, 60 uh, pages. Now, what do I include? You don't need to bother yourself about that. The first thing you include is the theoretical framework. Two slides is enough to handle this. What are you supposed to include on that theoretical framework? Now, the theory you are using for the work. What is the name of the theory? Then, who propounded the theory? What is the, the, of course, the year we follow the name of the person that, or person that propounded the theory? Then, the ideology of that theory. What is the ideology of the theory? And try to relate it to your work. Once you are able to do this, you are true with the theoretical framework. You don't need to begin to put all the other BB grammar. So, few statements to address all of this. Then the other aspect to include under the review of literature is the appraisal of the reviewed literature. You have done a thorough review of literature. Now, this knowledge gap in uh, literature that this study seek to address. So if you are able to establish the areas on which you have reviewed literature, must not include all of them. So once you have established those areas, then go straight to the knowledge gap. You have identified the cause of the review of written literature. Once you have done that, you are true with the appraisal of the review literature. Then let's go to methodology. Under methodology, we have the research design. Now, the research design, is one slide. What you need to do is to tell us the kind of study that you are carrying out. Does it fall under the quantitative or qualitative uh, kind of research? Then tell us the design you are using for the study and why did you decide to use that design? So once you have done that, you are true with the research design. So every other details you can provide, but this is what you should put in the slide so that you'll be able to talk to the slide and not the slide talking to you. So the next one is population. One statement we're going to, uh, one not statement should address this. You already know your population. So you can put it in one or two statements. So one slide is enough. Sample as the technique, of course, from the population, you have a sample and you have a technique that you are using for the study. So once you're able to establish the sample and, of course, the technique you are using for the study, and just give one or two statements to justify the use of that technique for the research, you are true with that uh, slide. The research instrument, so if it is the questionnaire you are using for the study, and the sections, you can, two statements is enough to address the research uh, instrument. Reliability of the instrument, you haven't uh, designed the uh, instrument, of course, you carry out uh, a, a test in order to establish the reality of the instrument. So once you, in, in this slide, what you need to do is to tell your audience what method are you adopting in establishing the reliability of the instrument. Once you are able to put that, how did you administer it to the audience? Of course, the uh, respondent you used to establish the reality of the instrument. The three uh, points is enough to have addressed the reliability of the instrument, the validity of the instrument. Of course, after designing the instrument, you must give it to research experts for them to uh, validate the instrument. So your slide should uh, be directed towards a such statement 
Then the last one is method of data analysis. Having uh, got your data, you must analyze your data. So tell the audience what uh, statistical tool you want to use to analyze the data. Then you can also include the benchmark, even the uh, criteria mean and the uh, others. So once you have done that, you are through with that uh, slide. The, the last section is the summary conclusion and recommendation. So summary of the findings, which is very, very important. You have carried out this. So I said this should be two slides, one or two slides, because this is very, very important in your research. So you should be able to bring out the major findings and put them in the slide. Or does it, uh, you don't necessarily need to put all the findings, but the, the major ones should be presented in the slide in a concise format. So it should not be too worded. Just few statements present the summary of the findings. Then, of course, from the summary, uh, summary of the studies, you have your conclusion. So your conclusion should be presented uh, looking at your findings and the title, the, the title of your research. So what is now your conclusion? You have your findings. What is your conclusion? So two, uh, one or two statements to be able to address the conclusion. The recommendations, uh, one slide. Then, of course, another important uh, aspect, contribution to knowledge. So you should be able to put your contribution to knowledge in uh, the slide. Then the last section is the appreciation uh, slide. So you should be able to put it uh, as, as the last uh, uh, slide. You have made a wonderful presentation. Your audience have listened to you with undivided attention. So you'll be able to thank them uh, at the end of the presentation. So that is all in uh, this presentation on summary of slide and uh, what will be in each uh, session. He has done double work. The first one is how to prepare the summary of your PowerPoints, how to prepare the points. That's what Lawrence talked on. And uh, the number of slides in this session. But our associate professor of library and information science is going to tell us after the preparation, what else? I've been asked to ask you to put on your badges, please. They gave all of us those who registered. They asked us to put it on for security reason, please. <laughs> yes, the associate team is even going around trying to identify you. you. Cannot just sit there. It's not meant to be at a glance. We should be able to know those who attended. When it's filmed or recorded, we should be able to know that these are the participants. That's it. The next lecture you have just received is a lecture is to introduce the workshop properly, as it should be. The next lecture you're about to listen to now, I am sure the technical issues have been addressed. And let's let the cat a little bit out of the bag. We said get your laptops ready. You are going to own workshop, not just 
understanding. Good. Are we communicating there? Moderator. Thank you. Uh, taking over the chair is not bad, but very soon the chair will not be there for you. We'll remove the chair. <laughs> you will be a table man. All right. Uh, we have pulled it. You look at the board to get the topic. She is going to speak to it. So they and roll on. So you, you will gently follow her using your laptop as she the rest. Dr. Mr. Bono, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, we've been introduced to the various chapters of the dissertation or thesis. The next is how to present it in the slide. So it's expected that everybody's system is on, because it's going to be a little bit practical before we go into the third session. Thank you. This is my desktop. On the desktop, there are many ways to get to the PowerPoint slide. You can see the arrow. When you click on that space, it will take you to Microsoft Office, where the PowerPoint is resided. But you are, if you are the person that is already used to PowerPoint, you might have pinned it to your desktop, or your tax bar, meaning that we have various ways to arrive at our PowerPoint. For those of us that are just coming in contact with the laptop for the first time, you click on that. And when you click on that, it takes you to this page, especially those using Windows 10. When it brings you to this page, you can see blank presentation blank presentation is for somebody that have not used the PowerPoint before. If you do not see this, there is an alternative to it. You will see this environment. If you cannot see blank presentation, you will see this environment where you will click on file. At this point, have we all arrived here in our various laptops or those of us that have the idea? Are we there? Have you been able to put your system? Have you clicked on that start button? Are we there? Please be. Follow me, please. So what is the problem? When you click on file, you know the first thing I said, when you click on that, it takes you to blank presentation. But if you cannot find blank presentation, then alternatively you click on file. When you click on file, it will take you to that blank presentation. The reason why I'm giving this to, there are some places that will not just see blank presentation immediately. And so you click on file, and then you click on new. Click on file and click on new, the blank presentation. When you click on the blank presentation, it brings you to this page. It brings you to this page. On this page, we have various things, the office things. We have the title slide and some other one, but we want to work with the blank presentation because you, our, our, Presentations differ from one person to another. The style that you want to use in presenting may also be different, especially if you are the type that use animation. You wouldn't want the one that is divided, the blank one where you can paste whatever you want. The pasting into the slide is in the next presentation, where they will show you how you can add details into
into your blank uh, sheet. And so this blank sheet, if you are able to do this activity for the first sheet, for the number of slides that you will have, like we were told for this chapter is two, for this chapter is one, you continue to duplicate it either by copy and pasting or going through the process of a new again or add a blank presentation. And then when you are true with all the sheets that you want, how do you now make yourself and your viewer to see the presentation? That takes us to this place we, we, that is being circled that show slide show. Then you click on the slide show. It will show this kind of environment that I am that will be moving from one page to another. It's a very short one. We'll get to practical session with Professor Nabofa. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you very, very much. is to introduce you to how you can get to the site. Don't worry. Professor Nabofa is coming to take you again. You'll probably go over the same thing and then continue from where Dr. Mrs. Obama stopped. So there's no problem. Just be calm and follow what uh, he's going to teach you now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You see, we left the moderators and the chairpersons and the deans on the high table. I am here among the audience. This the Mrs. Obama Day is a brief intro to what I'm going to present now. And you will have time, complete time, to do everything that you should do. Because that is the only way we feel that you can take some people from this workshop. I am going to start with, as I, I titled it, all the thesis to dissertation via problem identification and statements. See, we have found out that most of our students don't own their thesis. Most of our students don't own the proposal. They copy somebody's proposal, they go somewhere else, they carry something else, come and do, and they usually run into a problem. <laughs> that is why I said, let me address this one first, very briefly, before going to the workshop, as part of the workshop. Therefore, we'll look at the presentation following these steps. The first step we are going to do today is for the usual practice in choosing a research topic. What is the usual practice? We'll look at the usual practice as the first step. After that, we'll take the second step. The second step, we'll be looking at the current practice of choosing a research topic and its consequences. What are the consequences when we choose research topics? What are the consequences? When we have done that, we'll take the third step. The third step, we'll be addressing the third step 
that look like the bottom of the first step is actually the third step. It's a research problem identification. We call it the first and the most crucial aspect of our research. Your research problem identification is the most crucial aspect of every research. If you want to own your research, you must learn how to identify a problem and state that problem properly. Otherwise, you can't own a research. You cannot have any research without that. That is the first step, third step we take. The next step we take will then look at the situation, situating the identified problem within a geographical scope and a variable scope. You have identified the problem already. After identifying this problem, you need to situate that problem within a geographical scope. I say geographical scope, the whole world, the whole universe. You cannot research the whole universe. You cannot research even the whole world. You cannot research the whole country. So you want to take a subset of the country. If you are talking of taking off this university alone, sir, you need to take a subset of this university to research. That's why you say you are talking about your scope, that your geographical scope. Then the variables, all the variables that are associated with every problem you are going to identify. There are many, there could be several, but you need to limit yourself, delimit yourself to only the variable scope, delimit yourself to this specific area. That is what we mean by you are situating your geographical scope and your variable scope. The next step we will take will also address to identify the variables and seek the theories to model for studying these identified variables and problems. After you have identified the problems and the variables, you need to therefore look now at the theory or the models that can fit into how you are going to address that variable. Then we will look at crafting and deriving the research topic as we go into the workshop session, we are going to now look at the various steps of creating our PowerPoint slides for presenting the research that we have owned. I'm sure we are okay. Are we listening together? Good, so I can continue. Let's look at the usual topic, the usual practice of choosing the research topic. What is usual practice? Your supervisors will tell you, hey, young man, young lady, go and pray so that we choose one for you to take from them. <laughs> one of them will be approved. Choose from all the possible dissertation theses and topics available to you. When that thing is, when you are told to go and choose a research topic, go and bring three, four, five research topics. What do you normally do? What is usual practice? Please let us be sincere with each other here now. What is the actual thing you normally do? When you are told to go and bring research topics, what do you do? You go and look for topics. Where do you look for them? Eh? Internet. Past projects, right? That past project you are looking for, is it your project? No. How about the internet? You are going to find it. So is it your own or you are looking for them? No. So already you are already on the derailing side. That is the usual practice. See, the internet. Now they will say you should go and look for 626 as your topics for PhD and thesis ideas. These are online. You will see them. There are 626 research topics given to you. How you select from pick five and bring? Two. The usual admonitions we hear from our supervisor is this. Develop a topic that will hold your interest. The question is how do you develop a topic that will hold your interest from what you have selected from the topic or from past projects? How do you develop? Yes. You can find a theoretical topic basis to support your topic if it's a topic that is your own topic. The topic you can own that is yours. If the topic does not belong to you, there's no way you are going to look for another theoretical basis. You are going to be looking for that person, the owner of that work. You are going to be looking for that person's theoretical basis to support your work. Then say, look for a niche in which you can make a difference. Look for a niche in which you can make a difference. Yes, somebody has said suggestion for further studies. You can pick from there. Yes. Your topic is not concrete until the work is finished. Keep arranging the topic, shift gears. 
fine tune your topic based on input from others. Yes, those are the things. As, as fine and high sounding these admonitions are, are they really easy to uphold? The answer again is no. These admonitions are very, very good. Fine, beautiful admonitions. But can we actually hold these admonitions and adhere to them strictly? I say no. It's not really that easy. Let's look at step number two. The observed issues with current practice. You see, let me just remind us of the story of that man there. All of us know Adam in the Holy Bible. The question that God asked him was this. Adam, where are thou? The question is, where are you? What was his answer? Who can reply me, please? Eh? That is not the answer. The answer was, the woman, the woman you gave to me. Yes, I want to hear your answer. What did you say? What was the answer? I am hiding. Okay. What have you done? What have you done? I mean, the question is, what have you done? Why are you hiding? Okay. Then what have apple to eat. Is that it? Not himself that ate the apple. What is that? He's shifting the blame. He's shifting the blame from himself to another person. The topic that you asked me to choose, sir, is what has got me stuck. Is that not the truth? I am stuck now because you asked me to select some topics from somewhere. I brought those topics out and I'm now stuck. Eh? Father, is the woman you gave to me that gave me food to eat. Uh, supervisor, the project, the topic you asked me to select and bring, I brought them now. The one you chose, it, they do not own the topic. They don't own the topic. They don't own the research. It's not their own research. They are shifting the blame, like Adam was doing just now. They will shift the blame. It's not my fault. It's the woman you gave to me. It's the topic you have given to me because you did not choose your topic yourself. The woman to whom you gave to me to be with me is the one that gave me this problem. She gave me fruit to eat from the tree. So I ate. Is the blame. She's shifting the blame. Yes, what is happening now is this. The current practice, we have a steady increase in cases of plagiarism. When we say plagiarism, you go to the internet to go and look for a topic to bring. You go to another library, look for another topic to bring and bring and you select it. Are you not, are you not already plagiarizing? You are already plagiarizing. And we penalize you for plagiarizing. Then we are the one that ask you to go and bring topics. Are we, are we communicating at all? Right. If I, as a supervisor, ask you to go and bring topic, you go and look for online, bring topic from online, and I turn around to, uh, to come and... Uh, Penalize you for plagiarism when I'm the one who asks you to go and plagiarize. Okay. So it's a serious topic. After all, it was it was not an own work to start with. It was not your own work to start with. That was why you got that. According to Nabofa 2019, he said the most serious students get stuck. Why you select topics like this? Serious students will get stuck at some point. They don't know where to go to. They are stuck. Others, the lazy ones and dubious ones, they go to libraries of their institutions or other institutions to go and look for topics, drop and reproduce and give to you. So I might just change the dates. That's why you see somebody who's presenting a research in 2023 and the dates are 1967. We have them, many, when they come here. We say, your literature are too old. They are obsolete from beginning to the end. They go and, uh, Change the literature. I change the literature and I bring for you. Right? Go and update your literature. It's the same work that is. Certainly, 
is not an own war. I said the research problem identification is the first and most crucial. This is the third step of my presentation. Identifying a research problem is the most crucial aspect of free research process in this 21st century. Because all research in 21st century are connected with the tension to solve a problem. If you don't identify a problem, can you solve the problem? No. So the first thing, therefore, is to identify the problem. After identifying the problem, we we'll now go out to go and provide solution. So it's your effort to identify the problem and provide solutions to it. If you have not done your proposals yet, please, this is a very good opportunity for you to start identifying the problem in your own area of specialization. By the time you identify your own problem, let that problem come up with a problem well identified, well stated. Your supervisor on you will sit down well, discuss the problem, you come up with a topic arising from that problem. My brother and my sister, that way, that research is your own. It's your own. You are having ownership of that research. According to Fisher 2019, the research problem can be identified in an area of conflict, concern, or controversy, such as a gap between what is wanted and what is observed. This is what is wanted, and this is what we are seeing. I'm going to give examples shortly. Look at this example here. This is one of the research students I supervised a few years ago. 2016. We looked at it. I'm sure all of us have seen smokers before. In fact, some of us in this hall are smokers. Is that not true? Yes. Those are packets of cigarettes. Can you see the warning on the packet of cigarettes? Can we all see the warning on the packet of cigarettes? Best in hedges. Federal Ministry of Health warns that smokers are liable to die young. Dorchester, mentor, at the bottom of the Federal Minister of Health, warns that smokers are liable to die young. Another Dorchester there too, Federal Minister of Health, are liable to die young. And what we found out in this research, most smokers can read and write, literate, lecturers, academics, teachers like you and me, they smoke cigarettes. Yet, they see this written on every packet of cigarettes. The question is this. Is it that is it that these smokers want to commit suicide? Yes, sir. I will communicate it. Yes. Or they don't believe the World Health Organization. Are we are we seeing this problem here? This problem is real. Is it not real? Yes. See, answer me. If you think the problem is real, are we communicating with all of us here? Yes, we are talking about this problem of cigarette smoking. Smokers are liable to die young. That's what the Federal Ministry of Education is for. Yet, people, most people who smoke are poor and read and write, which means they are reading that information. Yet, they are still smoking. What is the problem? Is it that they don't believe the WHO, or is that they want to commit suicide? They don't care about their health. The people who are producing the yes, they want to make their money. They are very enslaved by You see, my senior colleagues of them said they are addicted, they are this. But you know that it's a problem. If you are in health promotion, if you are in health promotion, you want people a mass mass go to stop smoking, either active smoking or passive smoking. You know what we mean by active smoking? You are the one smoking the cigarette. Passive smoking, person sitting next to you is smoking. I'm not the one smoking, does not affect you. You think so, isn't it? But it affects you. <laughs> That's what we're saying now. Now, this is a certain problem that was identified by my students that year. Now look at another problem that was identified as well. What is the problem? What is the problem? No, I, I 
Now, look at another problem that was identified. Exercise is good for health. Is that not true? All of us know that exercise is good for health. Is it not true? The question is this. How many of us in this hall have exercised in the past one week? If you have done any form of exercise in the past one week, physical exercise, raise your hand. Not up to 10. <laughs> good. Good, 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 good. You see, we are communicating. The question is, has this information, this information I have just given now, exercise is good for health, health from WHO, World Health Organization, that everybody should exercise. Yet most members, most people in our population find it difficult to exercise. And you know why? The environment is not even friendly for you to exercise. If you want to come out early in the morning, you want to go and jog. How many of you want to come out? Fear of kidnappers. Farm robbers. Farm robbers don't catch you. Kidnappers will catch you. If kidnappers do not catch you, police will catch you that you must be up to something. You are wanting or something, right? <laughs> you are trying to escape. So fear is there. Then some people even bought this exercise equipment in their homes. One research we found out that okay, those people who have bought this exercise equipment want to exercise. Let us have a follow-up and find out how many of them and how well are they using the exercise. Ninety percent of people went to their homes. All the exercise equipment have cobwebs. I mean cobwebs were on this exercise machines. The question is, <laughs> you know there's a problem, isn't it? There is a problem that has been identified there. Look. Now look at another problem here. This on the left is a secondary school sports manager in South South Nigeria. This one is taking that one of my PhD students, she just did her proposal. I'm sure she's in the hall. I took permission from her before I'm using it now. Look at the PE teacher, who call the secondary school sports manager in South South Nigeria. Look at her on the left. Look at the same school sports manager on the right in other clients. Her name is Mrs. Foma Vivian Arenka. She's the one who did identify this problem. The question is this Who is likely going to be more productive? The ones in other clients are likely going to do well, are they? How many job resources do you think this one on this side, in the effort of trying to make sure he or she produces as well as that one, do you think it's not going to have some mental and emotional health problems on her? This is definitely because you must produce, you must perform. Right? You have your job description. If you don't perform, there is a, there's a problem. Look at another set here. This one is still teaching the same physical education, sports manager. Look at him on the left. I see the one on the right has a smart board, which is using to teach. Look at the blackboard this one is using to teach. We see them in our school. The question is, Again, who is likely to be more productive? Arenka's proposal said, now, she brought in a theory at this time. She called it the John Demand Resources Theory. The John Demand Resources Theory. See, she has located the problem, right? She has found the problem. She has now brought a theory called JDR. 
the JDR stipulates that if you want your staff to perform well, your teachers to perform well, you give him enough resources to do the job well. If enough resources are not given, the staff will not be motivated to do well. Right? And if enough resources are not given to match the job demands, the staff will either break them or he will not do the job. Right? Then look at research grounds she has found here. Is this? In South South Nigeria, sports managers, yes, research has shown, even when you will see it, that we don't have facilities. We don't have equipment to do anything to teach sports at the secondary school level. Yet, there are research studies that have shown that Nigeria is doing very well in sports. For example, Delta State have become first in the National Youth Games in sports, since the inception of the National Youth Games. How many sports schools, how many schools do you think we have in this Delta State that have standard sports facilities that we show that we saw in the other clients? Maybe we are deceiving ourselves. Secondary schools in the region are in dire need of human and physical resources. The other one says the objectives are being met. Objective of school sports. So researchers say the objective of school sports are being met. The other one says we are in dire need of human resources to perform this job. There's a conflict, there isn't it? This student has now owned this research. Do you think with this kind of topic that will come out? with this kind of identified problem and this kind of theory, that student can never be stuck anywhere. I don't think so. Because she has a well-identified such problem and arrived at thing. This should, all of them have notice references. I'm sure I've already established the problem that you need to own your own research. Once you own your research, then we can continue on filling it with what we are going to do. Let me move fast so that we go to uh, situating your research problem. You have already identified the problem, so start situating your research problem. Now, please, know that, yes, we have activity session for this workshop, which we are going into very shortly. Like I said, we are all teachers. Anywhere you don't agree with any point I'm saying, raise your hand. You have a point to make, raise your hand. I will recognize you. The class is big, yes, but we can see each other. Raise your hand. I will recognize you. We will talk and listen to you. Somebody is raising his hand there. What do you want to say, sir? Okay, we can continue. Now let's look at how we prepare our PowerPoints. Having arrived at the title design, and the title design in such a manner, we'll design now to capture our title on the slides. The first thing we want to do is list down and atomize all the points that summarize each of the areas of your proposals to thesis. I will communicate it. I said the first thing we are going to do today is to list and optimize the points we are going to talk about that summarizes each of the areas of the proposal's thesis or dissertation. We have, the first lecture gave us the points to do about all of this. The second lecture taught you how to open your PowerPoint plate, right? Now, what we're going to do now is to list or atomize the points that we're going to use to summarize each of the areas, right? I will communicate it. Good. So if we're going to have that, can we just list them immediately, quickly? Let's see the points. What I mean by the points? You have already identified the problem, you have already arrived at a topic, right? 
So the first point you are going to write down is your what? Your topic. Please put it down as the first point in your slide. Good. Write it, write one and click it there. It's practical. This is my student standing here. You know. That, that one is you know, not right, That one is not It's making phone call outside. You know, I said, right. Hello, you want to do practical session. You've been taught to list or itemize the points that you summarize in each area. I want a title for your thesis or dissertation now. For those of us that have already gotten titles, at the present or post-speed stage, write it on that sheet of paper in the fact that we are given. If you don't have one, formulate a title now. Thank you. Activity. So we are going around. Let's see your title. Listing activity. Open this. Open the slide like this. Doctor Mr. Obama taught you how to open this page as it's shown on the screen now. Right? So first of all, say point number one. Type it. Yes. Let's take that very quickly. List the point very sharply. The workshop facilitators are going round, so you should not have problem with listing. as I go
having listed all your points. Now let us jointly move ahead now together. Now that you have listed all your points, I want us now to move along together and start again from title as we move on. The title that you have owned as your own title. Open the title slides. Open your title slides. Write the topic on the title slide and populate the slides with the animations that bring the title to life and describe the presentation, your name on your title slide. So what I mean? Hello, can we all hear me? I said, open to your title slide. Write your topic, write the topic on that title slide and populate the slide with animations that bring the title to life and describe the presentation starting with your name. This is what I gave to you before. It's presented by Rika Fuma Vivian, partner with Amatic Number. This is what I mean by populate, write a topic and populate the slides and put an animation that will bring your title to life. Write your title, bring your title slide out there, put it there, then put your name as it is here now. I want to say bring something that will bring it to life. See that young lady running there now? That is for the people the woman is teaching as a school sports manager. Are we communicating? I already described the problem she identified before. I decided to bring it out for us to look at. Write the title slide and complete the title slide. You cannot. Do it now, do it now. So that we'll see. Are we done with the title slide? How do I get the animation? You know what you are working on already. You have already owned your topic. You have owned your title. It is your own title. So to get the animation should not be too much of a problem. You know why? There are, if you go online, Google it, you will see several animations. Go to Google Stock, free photo stock. You will see them, animations on that your topic. Put that your topic online, go to Google, 
to lift them out. Lift one that will suit it out here for you. I'm sure we are done with that. I've been able to affect the title slide and population of that title slide. We are